Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spohr here today with a couple of underwater scene cards featuring add-ons from the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero July 2020 release. So I am using five brand new products from the release today. I'm so excited about this. I guess seven technically if you consider the dies that coordinate with the two stamp sets I'm using. Um, so lots of brand new for these underwater scenes. Underwater scenes or um, anything, you know, with fish or anything like that tends to be some of my very favorite. We are going to take the Hero Arts School of Fish Bold Prints background and stamp this on some smooth white cardstock with the Hero Arts embossing and watermark ink. And I'm going to go ahead and do this a couple of times to create two backgrounds. The backgrounds that are add-ons this month are phenomenal. Um, I went ahead and just used the same one today, but they are all really, really good. Um, so definitely check out all of the rest of those. I have linked to the rest of them that have been released on my blog so you can find that information there and I will get to some other cards a little bit later this month because I absolutely love all of the add-ons. Really, really good stuff this month. I am going to emboss the School of Fish Bold Print with white embossing powder and then we're going to do some embossed resist with these backgrounds. So the first background, my little center, is a little off center, if that makes sense. So I moved my second background over to the left just a little bit in my Misty. I didn't remove anything else. I have a little adhesive there inside my Misty on the paper, so that's how they're staying in place. And that's going to make the center a little bit more in the middle. So that's the one here on the left. Then I am taking Hero Arts Reactive Inks in Pool Party, Splash, and Blue Hawaii, and we are going to apply these to our backgrounds for the embossed resist look. So I started in the center with Pool Party, and I'm using blender brushes to apply this. I love, love, love reactive inks. If you followed me for a while, I am sure you have seen some videos where I have used these before because I absolutely love the rainbow of colors they come in. But they're reactive, meaning they're going to react with water. And in this case, we're going to have them react with some Hero Arts shimmer sprays. So this is the splash, which is kind of my mid-tone color. And I blended that into Pool Party. And we're going to finish with Blue Hawaii. And that's going to be on the outer part of our school of fish there. And I'm going to, again, blend this into the splash color to get that beautiful seamless blend. And we're going to do both backgrounds. Now, it's important at this point, once we have all of our ink, to take a dry rag, a paper towel, something like that, and buff any ink that might be sitting on top of the embossed areas off. I always like to do this before I apply water to the background. So I'm just taking a microfiber cloth and I'm buffing pretty vigorously because I want those school of fish to be really bright white. Then to protect my work surface, I'm just going to take a shallow box and I'm going to pop my backgrounds in there and take the white iridescent shimmer spray and spritz this all over my backgrounds. Then I want to dry this. I don't want the two shimmer sprays to bleed into each other, so I'm going to go ahead and just dry these with a heat tool to speed up that process, but the water reacts, or the watery product, the shimmer spray, reacts with the inks, giving some nice faint areas. So you can kind of see those a little bit when I lift them closer to the camera. Then I'm going to spritz the backgrounds with Frost Shimmer Spray, which is an awesome blue. And I'm going to let these sit and completely dry. I love that little bit of distressing on the inked backgrounds. Next, I'm going to die cut this Porthole Fancy Die. And I'm going to die cut this three times from Smooth White cardstock. On one of the portholes, we're actually going to customize it with Copic markers, and we are going to keep the frame that we die cut one of them from to frame up our little school of fish background, and then we're going to have some awesome, like a little octopus and a fish and seaweed and things peeking out from behind. 
Starting with some cool gray markers in C4, 6, and 8, we're going to go ahead and color in the little uh, window, so part of it anyway, and then the porthole itself, we're going to use some blue markers to color that end. So once I get all my gray, I'm going to do kind of a lighter blue for that first circle and I'll shade in uh, B14 and 16. And then for the outer circle for the porthole, that's going to be B18. And then the rivets, those are all going to be C4, cool gray 4. And we're simply just going to add our color to this little die cut piece. This is a great way to customize die cuts, the fancy dies from Hero Arts, really easily. You can use any kind of coloring medium that you prefer, but I love customizing them and giving, getting all that depth and dimension so it's not just a single layer of color like from a colored cardstock by using some markers. And I'm even gonna add in the shading. For me, this was really important today. We've got our beautiful ink blended and shaded background, and then we're adding some sh uh, stamped and colored images, especially to this first card. Um, and then to the second card as well, we're gonna be customizing the submarine with Copic markers. But it just kind of flows together really nice because we have that same coloring medium throughout the die cuts and the stamped images. I'm carefully going around all those little rivets there. And anything that I saw that kind of had a little white, I went in with my lightest blue marker, in this case, B14. And I'm just gonna color that in so that it's not, um, there's not that harsh white ridge around this window. We'll finish adding all of our color. We'll add the cool gray marker to the rivets. And then we're gonna glue each of these portholes one on top of another. And that is, I'm gonna inlay the first one, but this is gonna give our porthole window a little bit more of a substantial look and feel. So it's not gonna be quite so thin and it'll also stick up just a little bit. Um, not a ton, but it definitely gives it a more sturdy look and feel. I'm going to use some liquid adhesive to attach these one on top of another. And then I will take some glossy accents and I added that to those rivets so they're going to have a glossy raised look as well. And I'm just making sure they're lined up perfectly. You can even set something heavy on top of this to help kind of smash it all together and hold it together while the liquid glue dries. I stuck it underneath my Misty uh, while I stamped the images that I'm going to be using for my card. Using the Need a Hand stamp set, we are going to stamp the sentiment just floating by to say hello along the bottom edge of our frame. So this is that piece we kept from one of the portholes. And I'm going to stamp this with that blue Hawaii reactive ink. So it works for ink blending really amazingly, but you can also use it for stamping if you want to. And I wanted the color of my sentiment to really complement the color and design of my card. I ended up having to stamp it three times just to get a really nice impression. Normally you wouldn't have to. I have not used this stamp before and I did not get it inked up very good the first time. So normally one stamped image is all it will take. So that is looking good. Let's go ahead and grab our images that we're going to be using for this card. I did trim off a little excess if you're wondering what I'm doing here. Um, my background panel, I want to make sure that none of it is going to stick out past my white frame. So I just trimmed the barest, teeniest, tiny little edge from a long side and a short side. And that's going to just make sure that nothing from that background is going to stick out past our porthole frame. 
and here is the glossy accents for the rivets I use a scrap perfect fine tip nozzle applicator on the tip of mine for precision in placement with my glossy accents and I stuck my finger in it which is always awesome so I scraped that off really quickly and I'm going to reapply that Next, we are stamping our images we're going to use for our card. So I am going to, on a scrap of smooth white cardstock, stamp images from the Need a Hand and Deeply in Love stamp sets. We've got two different seaweed images, a starfish, the octopus, and then the cute little fish. And we are going to just stamp all of those with some intensified black ink and then start coloring these in with Copic markers. Across the top of the screen, I have listed the marker colors I am using. I'm using YG2117 and G28 for the seaweed. And that's going to be for all the seaweed pieces. I started with these two and I really felt like I needed another one. So I will stamp an additional seaweed to put in the final card. For the octopus there, we are going to stamp him with, or color him, pardon me, with B6366, RV55, and 66. So kind of pink and purple. The, they're blue colors, but I often kind of think they have a purple tint to them. And I like the little pink and purple look for this little octopus. I think he's really cute. And of course the Floating by to say hello works great with any of these underwater critter images. So a nice layer of B66 first will blend in, or B63, pardon me, will blend in with B66 and then use a little RV55 and six, just a tiny, tiny bit of RV66 for the underside of all the, the tentacles and things there. And then we're going to go back with B66 for some additional detailing, RV55 to pinken up the cheeks on our octopus. I just want to make sure the blending is all really good here. Once we have him all colored in, I'm going to move on to the starfish with some of my favorite yellow red marker colors. We're going to use YR 31, 23, and 27. So kind of a yellow orange color combination. And that's going to be a great little image to tuck down there next to the seaweed along the bottom edge of our porthole opening. Then the final image we're going to color is the cute little fish with that big underbite. We're going to use R35, 37, and 39 mostly. I did pull in a little R32. However, where I place the fish, I don't even think you really see it that much, so probably didn't matter. Um, for the little light there, we're going to use YR31 and 23. Also add a little yellow to his eyes. Then we are going to go ahead and die cut these with the coordinating dies for both of these stamp sets. So lots of great dies, coordinating dies this month, which make it easy to die cut everything. And then we want to play around with placement. It was really important with this porthole opening and how this window is that I didn't want any of the lines going through an eye. So I'm going to work really hard to shift my octopus or fish enough that wherever I place them, that line is not going through directly through their face. Um, if it's going through like, you know, the side of the face, that's fine or whatever, but I didn't want it hindering the eye at all. So I'm going to play around with placement quite a bit. 
I thought it was important to leave that in here um, just to kind of show the thought process behind it and how it does make a big difference. If it's going directly through the face, you can almost see it there. It just doesn't look near as cute. You don't get the full effect of the little face on any critter, no matter what kind of card you're creating. So that's always something I try to keep in mind. I did take a white pen and add a little white pen detailing to all of the images for this card. And we are going to start with the octopus and I am going to work really slow and shift and kind of shift some more and that is looking pretty good and then we want to add seaweed and I did two of them over along the right side and then we're going to do one over on the left. We'll tuck the starfish down there kind of along the right side with the, the two the grouping of two pieces of seaweed and then the fish is going to be up in the upper right of that porthole opening. And again, I don't want the line to go directly through his face. I want you to get a lot of his, of his face detail. And we'll just go with a white pen and add any additional little pen detailing, little dots and lines, all of that good stuff right now to finish off how cute these little images are. Once I'm happy with the placement of all the images for the card, we can go ahead and start gluing everything down in place. So that's where we can add the frame and then we can inlay the porthole. Now the frame's pretty delicate along those two sides. So I did a tape runner adhesive along the top and bottom and then a little liquid adhesive along the sides. We're gonna back it with our school of fish We'll inlay that porthole window opening. Look how cute that is. And if it's sticking up a little bit, I always like to just use some craft tweezers or something heavy. I used craft tweezers because I didn't want to put anything on top of the glossy accents I've already applied to this right now. Um, but normally I would just put some acrylic blocks on top. And then I want to add some embellishments. And I originally thought I'd use these kind of rainbow colored little hearts. And I opted instead to use some Little Things Pool Hearts Droplets. Um, they look a little bit more like water bubbles, but they're in the shape of a heart. And I thought that worked really, really well for this card. So we're going to do a whole scattering of these starting kind of down by the sentiment and working our way up through the design up into the top part of the card. This also helps tie in the center porthole that where everything is going on on the card, but we do have our sentiment down below. It kind of just ties it all together um, and it's the perfect little way to dress up some of that white space without overwhelming the rest of the card design. So once that's done, this card is all finished. I do think I took a black glaze pen and added detail to the centers of the eyes for all the critters. If you have followed me at all before, you know that that's something that I generally always do because I think it really makes the eyes pop. For our second background, we're gonna be using this awesome submarine. So to start, we're going to take our background. We're going to go ahead and keep this background at four and a quarter by five and a half inches, so A2 sized. And we are going to layer some embossing. So I'm going to stamp a sentiment from the Deeply in Love stamp set up in the upper third of our card background with the embossing and watermark ink. But this time we're going to use black detail Hero Arts embossing powder. And this black embossing powder is awesome. If you want your stamped phrase to show up over what you've already in, stamped and embossed in the background, in this case the School of Fish, you want to use a darker color of embossing powder. And I use the black so it would really stand out against the colorful inking of our background. This sentiment is thank you from the bottom of my heart. We're going to heat set that. And then we are going to take our die cut submarine and we're going to start adding color to this with our Copic markers. Plus we also have some great little seaweed and coral images from both of the stamp sets. 
that we're going to stamp with different colors of Hero Arts ink. Whether it's Tide Pool and Emerald Green for the seaweed, and then I used Crimson and Pale Tomato for the coral. And I'm going to do several of those images that we can tuck along the bottom edge of this seam. And there's coordinating dies for all of those as well, which is so awesome. So a couple of months ago, Hero Arts did like this fancy cut mailbox die, which I really, and a plane, which I totally loved. And now there's this darling little submarine. I think this is so, so cute. I did a little yellow submarine, so we're going to color this with Y08, 15, and 17. And then uh, some cool gray marker colors in C004 and 6. And then the little windows actually die cut from this. So I'm going to die cut two more submarines and stack these one on top of another. And then insert and inlay in the window centers that I'm coloring with B000 and B00. Um, that gives it the kind of the look of glass like you're looking into the submarine, if you will. I love how this turned out though. This is such a fun, fancy die. Hero Arts does some of the most detailed fancy dyes and all the detailing makes it so easy to color them in with markers or other coloring mediums because you just kind of follow the lines, almost like it's a stamped image. And that's where you get all that fantastic depth and dimension. So we'll just color in a little bit more here. There were a couple more spaces to color in. Then we're going to die cut those additional two submarines. And we can stack those one on top of another. And it's going to show up so nicely against that blue inked background. And these are the windows that I was talking about that we're going to inlay into the submarine. Once we're happy with the coloring, we can adhere this right to our card background we're going to inlay the windows and then we have all of our great little seaweed and coral images that are going to line up along the bottom edge of our card I'm going to attach these with a little liquid adhesive I repeatedly stamped the one image with Tide Pool and Emerald Green and die cut all of those so that I have about six, I think, along the bottom edge of my card. And then we're going to fill the windows with glossy accents so this dries completely clear and has that glossy raised finish. And then finish the card with a little trio of those same Little Things Pool Heart Droplets coming up from the submarine. And I'm just stamping a few additional seaweed images here and die cutting those to place along the bottom edge. I'm going to adhere all of these at different heights as well. Um, some of them will kind of come up and overlap the submarine just a little bit. That gives it a much more cohesive finished look, but some of them will be a little bit shorter. I'm using tweezers again to kind of help pinch and hold these down while that liquid glue dries. We're going to adhere this entire panel then to a white top fold card base. And that will finish up our second underwater scene card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these two underwater scene cards. 
The supplies I use to create these cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Hero Arts My Monthly Hero add-ons that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.